Hello, and welcome again to the University Church of Christ Bible Study. We will be studying tonight again from the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 5. Uh, we will begin at verse number 17. So we invite you to grab a pencil and your Bible and a piece of paper um, so that you can write down some of the many things that we talk about through this study. Also, we are going to invite you uh, to open up your textbook also. Uh, the goal for this study is to answer quite a few of the questions that are written in the uh, chapter on elders, uh, which starts um, on page uh, 29. Um, and um, I'm encouraging you for your homework to read that. Um, and then uh, I'll be working tonight on answering quite a few of the questions um, that are on uh, page 31. So after a song and a prayer, we will begin our study. Give me the Bible, star of gladness gleaming, to cheer the wanderer, lone and tempest tossed. No storm can hide that radiance peaceful beaming, since Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Give me the Bible, holy message shining, thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining, till night shall vanish in eternal day. Will you pray with me? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this opportunity to look into your word. Our prayer is, Father, that we'll be able to grow closer to you, that we'll have a better knowledge of those things that you will have us to do, and uh, so that we can know how we are to uh, behave ourselves as your children, even in front of this world. We just ask that you will just bless us with these insights and help us to live to the praise and glory of your honor. For those who may not know you, Father, we pray that they will come to a relationship with you and that they will come to know you as we do, as savior and friend and, 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 and as provider. And we just thank you so much for that. Just watch over us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay. So um, we last week, Last week, uh, finished our discussion on widows, and um, we are moving on to yet another uh, segment of people that are in the Lord's church um, that the Lord wants us to be mindful of, um, and that is our elders. Um, so if we look at the book of First Timothy, chapter 5, and verse number 17, um, and I'll be pretty much going through this verse by verse. It says, let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor uh, in the word and doctrine. So Paul is shifting gears here. And again, he gets back to the elders. Now, we need to be clear that this is not talking necessarily about older people. Um, he has re-entered into a discussion on the bishops, um, and those are the elders that we see mentioned here. Um, and he says, let the elders who rule, um, and that rule there is very important in us reaching the conclusion that these are elders. Um, many a places we see where the elders uh, have the place of rule in the Lord's church. Um, nobody else is given this responsibility except the bishops. Um, those that we read about earlier 
um, and those who Paul is talking to talking about now. Um, he says uh, he says that, that they ought to be counted worthy uh, of double honor. Now again, just revisiting the word honor um, and looking at the uh, Strong's definition, uh, G word G five o nine two. Uh, to May, it's a value, i.e., money paid, or um, concretely uh, and collectively valuables, by analogy, esteem, especially of the highest degree, or the dignity itself, honor, precious, price, sum. So we, we, we catch a lot from, from this definition. Um, that it is a place of honor. It is um, it is um, a place of dignity, um, but it's also deserving of uh, reward, if you will, um, payment. Um, it, it, it's worthy of that. Um, when we honor um, the way the scripture tells us to, um, there will be some kind of support or some kind of monetary value um, involved. So Paul is really telling us that um, actually the elders, um, they actually have a right to be paid or honored. That's their right. Um, and um, in the same breath, elders and preachers have the right um, to double honor and pay. Elders um, that preach, um, it should be, I'm sorry about that. Elders that preach um, have the right to double honor. Um, this says a lot about, uh, about how um, there are paid people in the Lord's church working for him. Now, I, I wanna be clear that not all of the time is it prudent uh, for elders or for that matter, preachers um, to take payment. Paul himself um, decided that he wasn't gonna take uh, funds from the people of Thessalonica because um, he didn't want any doubt. He didn't want any reason uh, for people to be turned away. And so uh, we do have elders um, and they are worthy and they are, um, and they are, they should be honored um, in some way or another. But again, it's their choice uh, whether they want to actually use the monetary uh, support in that. Um, Deuteronomy 25 uh, in verse number four, you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain. Um, and so the, the long and short of this is that as long as the ox is working, um, God um, seen a need to tell the people that the ox really needed to be able to enjoy uh, some of what he was working on. Um, and so for that reason, don't muzzle him. Um, let him eat some of the grain that he's working so hard uh, to, uh, to uh, tread. Um, and then uh, the Lord himself, um, as he sent out the 70, um, in, in Luke chapter 10 and verse number seven, um, he, he puts this in, uh, in the charge that he gave uh, some of those that he sent out um, about the places that they go and how they were received. Um, he says, and remain in the same house. These are people that would receive them. He tells them to remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as is given. And this is why. For the labor is that the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not go from house to house. So Jesus had a specific uh, duty in mind for those that, that were going to receive uh, the gospel that was being preached by these 70. And um, they needed to pay for it. And for that reason, when they came across a house that would offer the blessings, um, they, they should. Uh, uh, take um, the food and the drink uh, as it's given to them because 
They're deserving of that for the work that they do. But he says, do not go from house to house. Don't make this your whole purpose, running around looking for something to eat. The whole purpose is that the gospel is preached. Um, and, uh, and, and that is the uh, labor that those 70 uh, were so worthy of. So we, we have in the church elders who, who um, are watching out for our souls. They're looking out for us. Um, and and, and that, that deserves some thanks, some honor. Then there are elders um, that preach. We're, we're blessed in this congregation to have three elders, all of them preach, um, and, um, and they're worthy of the double honor that this passage of scripture is talking about. Um, he goes on to say in uh, chapter five, in verse number 19 of First Timothy, he says, do not receive an accusation against an elder except from two or three witnesses. Um, you know, um, too many times um, Sunday dinner uh, consists of fried elders and, and baked preachers. Um, they're, they're the main course um, on the dinner table for a lot of places. Um, now we have, again, elders here that we love um, and, and I, I can't see this happening here um, because our elders are so open and willing um, to, to make it through uh, whatever difficulties there may be. Uh, but there are some who, some elders who have to stand up um, and be elders um, and call tough shots sometimes and folks don't like it. Um, and, uh, and, and what happens is a lot of gossip takes place. A lot of things are said um, about elders and about church leaders, but Paul's encouragement to Timothy, the young evangelist, and it's good for us all to take this advice, don't receive the accusation against an elder except from two or three witnesses. Um, accusation, it's the strong word, it's the strong's word, uh, G2724. Um, and um, it's a complaint, a criminal charge, an accusation. Um, and uh, for us, we're talking about sin. If an elder is involved in sin, or if there's an accusation of sin, uh, Paul wants Timothy to be very careful about how he handles that accusation. Um, if you think about it, um, even with the two or three witnesses, um, mistakes can be made. Um, and, and then there are mobs that can be formed. I, I think about Jesus um, and how they did him. Um, they got a whole bunch of people, a whole mob of people to say things against Jesus and to accuse him of things um, that, that were not true. Um, and in the end, um, they kind of sort of won. They, they got him on the cross and they killed him. Um, and that was their aim. Um, but um, of course, they didn't really win because that was God's plan all along. Um, and, and, and so, you know, uh, that just shows the power and insight of God in using things. But accusations, uh, we must be very, very careful of. Um, Jude um, chapter one in verse number nine, we see uh, Michael, the archangel, uh, when he continued with the devil, um, he disputed about the body of Moses. Durst not bring against him railing accusations. Now let, 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 let's look at what that means. M Michael, the archangel was contending with the, bot, with the devil um, and disputing about Moses, but he did not bring any accusations against Satan. Now, of, of course, there would be accusations that could be made against uh, Satan, 
he's a murderer. He's a liar. He, you know, all of these things that could have been said about him, but um, Michael didn't didn't um, do that. Um, he didn't go into um, the accusations. He just simply said, "The Lord rebuke thee." So my my point is is that even Michael, even even God's um, uh, uh, heavenly angel, if you will. Uh, refused to get into um, calling them names and accusations to somebody who probably deserved it, but instead um, used the Lord uh, to rebuke him. Two or three witnesses. Um, just uh, real quick, let, let, let's just um, talk about this. Uh, Matthew 18, 6. Um, Jesus speaking of um, discipline, um, which is very timely and fits in with what we're talking about here. Um, he says, um, but if he will, but if he will not hear you, take with you one or two more that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. So there is some wisdom in having two or three people that are saying the same things, um, especially if they're Christian people, especially if they're following God, especially if their word carries merit. Um, and so um, it is important that we understand that there are two or three witnesses. But again, we have um, false witnesses that could uh, pop up. Um, and, and what we're talking about here um, in, 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 in the uh, life of an elder, um, we need to um, just really be mindful that this is God's man um, that he has put here for a purpose and, um, and that um, when we do what we're supposed to do, God will bless the whole situation um, but um, there's no need for us um, to, to uh, get involved in accusations against elders that are not true. Now, take it, we do have some men that have fallen um, and they, um, they, they, they need to be um, dealt with. I'm gonna um, just mention, that I came up with another thought on this, um, and um, it stems from the book of First John, chapter five, uh, where it talks about the three witnesses um, that are in heaven and the three witnesses that are on earth, and they're all testifying of the works um, that we do. Um, I, 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 I'm inclined to believe that that has something to do with this. That um, even um, if two or three witnesses are not available. God's word is able to reveal um, when people are um, in uh, sin and, um, and especially uh, in the elders. If the witnesses are present and accusation is found, moving on, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse number 20, he says, those who are sinning, speaking of elders, those who are sinning, Rebuke in the presence of all that the rest also may fear. Um, in this, God kind of puts um, something a little heavier on the elder um, by, uh, by this public uh, discipline um, that we see. Now, again, if we go back to uh, Matthew chapter 18, we see that there is discipline in the Bible. Um, we can look at the book of 1 Corinthians um, and see that there's discipline that took place in the city of Corinth. Um, and, um, and, um, and it was harsh discipline. Um, but what, I, what, what I'm seeing so hard about this is that there's no... Um, big sin or little sin attached to it. 
to just if they're involved in sinning. Now, now, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I, I, that, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about being involved in sinning. He needs to be rebuked in the presence of the whole congregation. Um, because if we do that, um, this is God's man. And if God's man is being rebuked, what's going to happen to the rest of us? You see, and that's, that's the fear that needs to be set upon us, that God is not playing with these men who he expects to, to uh, be a certain way. Um, and so since he's not playing with them, um, he's probably not playing with us either. Um, as a matter of fact, I am sure uh, and can say he is not playing with us. So when we see the elders being rebuilt for a sin, um, we, we need to, uh, there, there needs to be a certain fear in our hearts uh, so that we don't fall into that same condemnation. Um, he goes on to tell him um, that this should be done uh, without prejudice and it should be done without partiality. Friendships, um, you, you know, because you're buddies uh, with the man who's sinning, who's an elder. Um, you, 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 you might want to overlook this um, sin that he's involved in. Um, if he's family, um, for fear of losing, or um, if there's a fear, I mean, we are talking about elders, um, and they are um, able to fire <laughs> an evangelist uh, for not doing the right thing, um, and, and, and Paul does not want that to be Timothy's concern uh, when it comes to this important matter. None of this stuff. Uh, should play a part in it. The only thing that should matter is doing what God told us to do. And here, God tells him to do it uh, without prejudice and without partiality. If he sins, no matter who he is, um, if he's in the uh, office of elder, he needs to be rebuked openly. Um, this becomes hard, um, but um, if we look at 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 2, uh, Paul's encouragement again to Timothy, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, convincing, rebuking, exhorting with all long suffering and teaching. Um, so the evangelist has a job to do, and God expects him to do it. Uh, when it comes to this very difficult uh, thing to do in disciplining elders. The three commands um, that we see um, in verse number 22, he says, do not lay hands on anyone hastily, nor share in other people's sin, keep yourself pure. All of this, um, and I think the author of, the, of, of our workbook did a pretty good job at helping us understand that all of this is related uh, to uh, the, the behavior of the elders. Um, so um, Paul um, wants Timothy not to be quick to lay hands um, on anybody. Um, this is not a miraculous laying on of hands, no transferring of the Holy Spirit. Um, only the apostles could do that. Um, but um, this is more or less um, either one of two things. Um, it's either a discipline. Um, we, we see this being used um, for discipline purposes. Um, when, when, uh, when, when things are out of order, um, I believe it was Phineas, he laid hands on some people um, and, and, and 
So that, that's one possible meaning of lay hands on. But I'm more inclined, given the context, uh, to take the second, uh, which is uh, to ordain or to endorse um, laying hands on, giving your approval, um, and that carries weight uh, in the sight of God. N no miraculous powers with it, um, no speaking in tongues or, or healings or anything like that, uh, but it is an endorsement from God's people. And Paul wants Timothy to not be so quick uh, to lay hands on, um, investigate. That's, that's why he doesn't want him to be quick. Now, let, let's face it. Paul already told us that if we desire to be elders, we desire to be, we desire a good thing. But still, our desires sometimes fall short of that. So to make sure that uh, we're not putting people into this very important office, um, he tells them, tells him to investigate. If you investigate, the proof will be clear in due time. It takes time for uh, a man to uh, develop to the eldership. Um, and in due time, his work will be seen. And there'll be no doubt that this man belongs um, in the work of the elder. So Paul wants Timothy to kind of take his time and make sure that the people um, that he's putting his hands on for this for this very important work um, are up to the task. Don't rush to ordain men unless you are sure uh, is the message to the young evangelists. Don't share the sins of others. Don't contribute in any way uh, that uh, will highlight sinful men. So if you ordain, uh, a sinful man, you are, um, you, you're, you're sharing in this sin. You're agreeing with this sin. Um, and Paul tells Timothy not to do that. And then he tells him to keep yourself pure. Don't fall victim to the very things you teach against. Um, and, and, and if he does this, um, if he does these things, um, God will be pleased with his work. The men may not be pleased, but God will be pleased with his work. All right. Um, so our homework um, is to read page 29 through 30 in our workbooks. Um, and that's um, the treatment of the elders. Um, and then I'm going to also ask you to be prepared for a brief discussion for questions seven, eight, and nine on page 31. Um, I, I believe, um, again, if you read between the lines, I've answered uh, most of the questions one through six uh, through this presentation. Um, and so I'm just going to be asking for um, those three questions on Wednesday night. And um, I do want to um, tell you that it, that we will um, be having a brief discussion uh, on Wednesday as um, song leaders uh, will be um, doing some things on the last 15 minutes of class. So we invite you to come and be a part of that also. God is good, and I hope we're getting that all of God's people are important um, and deserve to be treated um, with great deals of respect, some with honor. What shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thanks again for this time and thanks again so much for this study that teaches us how uh, to treat those that you have put in place of elders and I thank you, Father, for the elders that we have here, and I pray for them. I pray for their strength, and I pray that you will keep them protected from the evil one. 
that we can have these great examples to follow uh, that, uh, that are following you. We just thank you so much for the church and how you work things out for us. Um, and we, we, we express our gratitude through worship and devotion to you. Our lives are dedicated to you. And we just ask that you use us as you will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.